Praise the Lord, saints of God. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest Broadcast. I'm so blessed and privileged to have another opportunity to come and speak life to you today. I pray that wherever you are today, that your life is blessed, that you're happy, healthy, and that you're wealthy. Today, the Lord is going to speak with us about a subject or a thought of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And we're going to be looking at several portions of scripture that Jesus mentioned the kingdom. I think that what you will find is that Jesus talked about the kingdom more than anything in all of his teachings. Not just a kingdom, but the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And so when someone stresses a repeated theme, it is important that we understand the context and the meaning of that. Because many of us Christians or believers or followers of Christ, we get stuck on church. But Jesus was stuck on the kingdom. I want you to say the kingdom. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The kingdom of God. It's a very popular scripture that may be familiar to most people, which is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. Where after Jesus taught his disciples how to pray he told them to seek ye first someone said first to seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness so as we go through this week's lesson and listen to this week's message i want you to ask yourself what are what are you focused on most are you focused on church or are you focused on the kingdom? For Jesus has told us that we're going to inherit a kingdom, saints of God. So I want you to be prepared to enter into God's kingdom. The church may be a vehicle to get some people there. Some people who are not in church or go to church or a part of a church, you can still find your way into the kingdom by following the straight and narrow path that leads to righteousness for again let's take a look at matthew 6 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you these things if you look at the preceding verses of scripture you see that people were worried about food they were worried about drink or clothes what they're going to put on jesus told them and the holy spirit says to us today that if we seek ye first the kingdom of god and this is very important to the God and his righteousness, which is God's way of doing things. Then all the things that you are worried or concerned about, God will add unto you when you seek ye first the kingdom of God. I really want you to understand the importance of this message for Jesus certainly understood the importance of this message for he also told us in scripture that this gospel of the kingdom of God must be preached to all nations before the end comes. Are you doing your part, children of God, ministers, laborers, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists? Are you doing your part in ushering in the kingdom of God, which is God's rule and reign and God's way of doing things even here in the earth? Another text of scripture we can look at comes from Matthew 5, where Jesus told us what's commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer, where he says, first thing, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then he says these words, thy kingdom come, so that thy will can be done in earth as it is in heaven. This is why it's so important for us, children of God, to focus on the message that Jesus focused on. And that was the message of the kingdom of God, though the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God. There are many gospels being preached today, saints of God. You can turn on the cable televisions and you can look at internet videos on YouTube, TikTok. You'll hear many gospels. Many people are preaching. Many people are sharing news. But if it's not the gospel or the good news of the kingdom of God, it is simply sounding cymbals and tingling brass. It will be of no real benefit to your life. In this, not only in this world that we presently live in, but in the kingdom that is to come. 
Let us pray real quick, saints, before I get into some more of the uh, inspiration of this message. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for your word being alive and active, going to buy the Sunday our soul and spirit. We thank you today, Father, that we have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church to prepare ourselves for the kingdom. We thank you, Father, that you've given us the message of the kingdom. I ask that you stir up afresh the gifts within us that we will proclaim and bear witness to the kingdom of God in our midst. That indeed the kingdom of God is within us and may it come alive and come out of us as we go forward to minister to to preach, to teach, to love, to serve, to give, to live victoriously in this world because we seeking you first and your kingdom, O God, and all your righteousness teach us your ways, O God, that we may lead and follow after your plan and your purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks to God again. The kingdom of God is the emphasis of our message for you today. As I stressed with you earlier, it was also the emphasis of the message that Jesus Christ preached and proclaimed during his earthly ministry. And I gave you several examples thus far to help you to understand. I may not have time to visit all of the different scriptures that relate to Jesus' message about the kingdom of God and sometimes referred to as the kingdom of heaven, depending on which gospel writer was writing and depending on which audience he was speaking to. So you can go and make a google search of the kingdom of god scriptures yes i'm gonna give you some homework assignment today our office work i want you to google kingdom of god scriptures and i want you to read through those scriptures and allow your spirit to be saturated with the message and the gospel of the kingdom of god understanding why jesus found it so important to mention the gospel of the kingdom more than any other thing in his teachings for he says for the kingdom of heaven is like a man that goes on a far journey. He leaves talents to some people. He gave one man one talent, another he gave two, the scripture says. One man he gave five. He says it's like a man that goes on a, a faraway kingdom, on a journey that he's coming back. This is Jesus' parable about the kingdom of heaven. The scripture tells us that the, the man who went away came back and acts an account for that which he had left each person. The one who had left one, the one who had left two, the one who left five. He first went to the one who had one talent and he asked him, what have you done with that talent which I gave you? The man responded that I knew you were a hard man and you reap what you sow is not. So I buried your talent. Oh, saints of God, I want you to know, I pray that you were not found like this first man who buried his talent. Jesus says, you lawful, you wicked and slothful or lazy servant, you could have at least given it to the bankers to let it earn interest. He went to the one who had gave two. He says, what have you done with the talents that I've given you? He says, look, master, you've given me two. I have produced four, two more. He says, well done. You're good and faithful servant. And he went to the one who had five. He says, what have you done with the talent that I have left you? He says, you have left me five. I produced five more. And then Jesus took the one coin from the one who had the one. He says, those who have will have more. Those who have not, will, that which they have will be taken from them. God, I want you to know, saints, God is expecting a return on his investment in your life. In the name of Jesus, do not bury your talent. Do not be buried with your talent for whatever you have buried will be buried with you and will be stripped away and given to those which have produced a return on Jesus' kingdom investment. Yes, saints, God is trying to prepare us, the church, the world, every man, every woman, boy and girl of every kindred, tongue, tribe and nation, to enter into the kingdom of heaven. For he says indeed in his scriptures that we shall inherit the kingdom. Now don't get me wrong, it's fine if you have church membership, but church membership will not allow you to enter into the kingdom alone. You will have to be born again, as Jesus told Nicodemus, of the water and the spirit in order to see the kingdom of God, in order to enter into his kingdom, you, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. So I want to leave this message with you today, saints of God. I want you to ponder it. I want you to meditate on it. I want you to search the scriptures right along with me to see whether the things that I say are so or not. 
And may the Holy Spirit aid you and convict you and convert you so that you can be prepared to enter into God's kingdom when he returns. And some of us may return before he returns. But whatever the case may be, if you have been prepared, if you already have done and taken the steps, if you are seeking first, somebody said first, if you are seeking first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, you don't have to worry about a thing in this earth. For all those things that we concern ourselves with in this earth will be added to us when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Father, I thank you today. I praise you. I glorify and magnify your name. I worship you for your splendor, for your majesty, your dominion and power. I pray that each person under the sound and hearing my voice today will be quickened in their spirit. That you will give them understanding, God, that you will give them wisdom, that you will give them strength and direction as they meditate upon the word, as they take action on your word. Empower them, oh God, oh power them by your spirit today, that they may live above as salt and light in this earth, that they may inherit this kingdom that you have preached and proclaimed. Let the good news go forward to them and through them even now. And I bless and praise you in advance for all the harvest of souls that you offer everyone into your kingdom. May many more be added to the kingdom today. In Jesus' master's name, hallelujah and amen.